for sure. I think that's a mark of a great player that um, Mage is a good class for them. Oh, fatigue, boys. <laughs> and it looks like it could be the yeah. fatigue mage, or at least a very defensive mage that has Echo of Medivh. Healbot and Sheep, yeah, it's gotta be. It's just gotta be fatigue. So, Ping Ping Ho, <laughs> how do you mulligan against mage? Is it aggro? Is it control? Yeah. You just never know. I think you just have to value your curve and your board here as the mage. Um, although, I feel like if you're worried about the aggro, you definitely have to have like that lightning storm. He is going to keep the chow. Alright, so Hex, of course, is one of the better counters to duplicate. Hex their creature and then give them two frogs. So it doesn't seem like it'd be great against a defensive deck, but that definitely might have some applications in this matchup. Is there a better counter to duplicate than Hex? Uh, Flare. Kazan Mystic. Oh. <laughs> I guess so. Touche. Touche. Hex isn't bad, though. Alright. So this is the deck that we saw from Paping Ho yesterday, too. He has Power Mace. Um card that a lot of players uh, thought it would be really good just that the fact is shaman can't really support mech that well compared to other classes then again you don't need to pepper your entire or you don't need to flood your entire deck with mech if you just pepper it with some cards here and there like that pilot shredder harvest golems yeah you actually still have a pretty effective weapon definitely i actually a big fan of the way he built this deck i the thing about it that's been most exciting to me is I think he cut the one mana removal. I don't even think I've seen a rock biter out of this deck. I think he, no, he does he play at least rock biter. rock biter. Yeah, there's no bolts. There's no crackles. Earth shock. Earth shock. There's there's a shot. Yeah, but no no bolts, no crackles. That's the important thing. None of the overload removal. So just the the ones that don't mess with your curve at all, which makes Wait, a lot of sense. Are you sure this is fatigue mage? He's got mirror uh, entity. Not anymore. Now he's got Cairn, Azadrake. Looks like it is just control mage with Echo of Mediv. Which is an interesting card, I guess. It's kind of like duplicate, right? Like in control matchups, it it doesn't just draw you cards, but it makes cards. So if you go to a fatigue war, you have more resources to work with than usual. Ooh, the hard Ping counter. Ping Ho, uh, <laughs> he actually attacked a little bit too fast and missed one damage. Yeah. Oh. Oh okay. no no. <laughs> This is a play I make a lot, you know. When you make a slight mistake, you do something a little too quickly, then, right. you, then you make the play that makes it look like it was on purpose. Right. <laughs> it's okay. I can respect that. Well, um, there's only one play this turn for Strifeco. It involves using his hero power. It's either he wants to tag the... He wants to tag a minion, or if he wants to use activate his own explosive sheep. Yeah, I mean, there's three different pings he could go with here. He can take out the Searing Totem, he can ping his own sheep, or he could just ping the Flame Tongue and let the sheep live. That would make it vulnerable to Earthshock, so I'd expect Strifegrow to shoot the Searing Totem, I think, and then play his sheep, if I had to guess. I Every time I guess what Strifegrow does, though, I feel like he always tries to go for a little bit more of the aggressive slash greedier play. That happened. That was his downfall at BlizzCon. Ultimately, like he didn't play around a circle of healing combination, just got blown out. Mm. So it wouldn't surprise me to see him explosive sheep and then ping the the flame tongue totem here. What to do? Wouldn't surprise what me in the slightest. Then again, uh, all those plays have some merit. It's all about how you want to scale the damage. He goes for a safe play. Okay. Right, good for you, man. Good for you. Uh, makes sense. Time for Piloted Shredder to come down, I think. Not seeing a much better play than that. It's going to be a lot easier for Strifecrow to take care of that Flame Tongue than it is for Ping Ping Ho, just by virtue of the hero powers. But Strifecrow definitely wants to be developing five drops for the next couple turns. Hmm. Which is best here? Also important to note, Strifecrow does have Flame Strike, and that AoE is so devastating for Shaman, especially. Yeah, one of the best cards to have against Shaman for sure. I expect to see a Sludge Belcher here, just because of how ineffective all the other options are. Yeah, Drake dies, and you don't really gain the advan card advantage, it's just to dig deeper in your deck. Uh, and of course, Antique Heal Bot is not useful at all here, <laughs> so it pretty much seems like Sludge Belcher just by lack of better options. Iron McGowl. That's so strife grow. Hmm. Oh man, actually you kind of failed to realize how awkward the situation is. Cause uh the Iron Beak Owl silences so the death rattle is no longer into play. 
Uh, but more importantly, it's like you can't... The, the owl challenges the body of it. Well, yeah, but you just attack the flame tongue. Right, but then that means the owl lives and the hero power alone can challenge it too. It's, it's just like, it's just funny. It's yeah. like an awkward situation for the pilot shredder. Definitely. <laughs> uh, I guess he doesn't really want to play Cairn turn 6 anyway, because he hasn't seen a single hex yet. So th his thinking is, okay, I'll play owl this turn, and then play Belcher next turn after the shredder's already been silenced. It won't it won't just trade off for Sludge Belcher on its own, since Flame Tongue Totem will be dead. It's always a little painful to play off curve, because of course uh, throughout the course of the next couple turns he might even float two three mana. But we'll see how Strife Coach uh, approaches it. I mean, he's always one of those players that's so interesting to watch, and it's honestly pretty hard to cast him because I never feel like I can crack his mindset. Definitely think we'll just see a fire elemental here. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a few other options, but it just seems like the cleanest one. All right, and Shaman's gonna be pretty far ahead on board. Will this flame tongue totem ever be relevant? That's what I want to know. Well, he's gonna play Sludge Belcher, she'll get the buff, but Ping Ping Co has the hex for that. Uh, Frog is gonna have to attack though. If he goes that route. <laughs> the frog will have two attack. That's hilarious. So he's gonna have to power mace the frog. Uh power mace and he has the Annoyotron. Antique heal bot. That is really surprising. Is he setting up for a flame strike next turn? Because if, he's if gonna he hope heal bots, he can't ping the fire elemental though. Huh. I did not expect that play at all. What did I tell you, man? <laughs> Strife goes Strife goes one of the hardest players for me to like try to tap into his mindset. I mean, it's one of those things where in reflection you can always analyze the play, but. Predicting him is one of those really difficult things. You know that octopus that predicts like the Super Bowl every year and is like eerily correct? There's a Super Bowl predicting octopus? Yeah. So every time we cast, I learn something new about the world, <laughs> whether that's egg crises or. Yeah, you know. sports betting. But I don't think he could correctly predict a strife group. Oh, okay. I'm just going to go out on the limb here. That's right. <laughs> All right. Learn something new. <laughs> All right, well. Strifecro can just go ahead and trade here at the 4-3. Keep Fire Elemental at 5 health. It's very important. At least for one more turn. Once Strifecro has access to 9 mana, he can go ahead and Flame Strike and just ping Fire Elemental, so he won't have to... It won't really matter if it's topped off on health or not. But he is taking a significant amount of damage. Yeah. Mm. Alright, well... Power Mace gets the clean kill, and Flame Strike here, not too effective at all. Strafro definitely getting punished for that Antique Heal Bot play. I'm going to go out on a limb and just say that one was incorrect. No offense to Strafro, but that one seemed like... Too out of the box and creative. Yeah, I just don't see any benefit to it compared to any of the other options, right? Like, if you just play Belcher, wasn't that just better in every way? I think he wasn't expecting Power Mace. Wasn't expecting a 3 damage card from the Shaman? Well, specifically, Power Mace... It could have been like Bolt or Rock Biter or sure. another Fire Actually, Elemental. Another fire Elemental would have also been okay yeah. too. Well, he is staring down a pretty tough board to deal with. He needs to somehow maneuver this game in a way that Flame Strike catches him up. He's going to be Sludge Belcher now, and he's going to get rid of the bubble instead of pinging the Fire Elemental. Uh, I guess he doesn't want the buff to Power Base to translate over to the Noyotron. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Well, geez, uh, there's so much damage here. Let's calculate real quick. Um, so if you if you hex the Sludge Belcher and get past it, you have 6, 4, that's 10, plus 4, it's 14, plus the Power Mace, that's 17. Oh my gosh. I think you'd do it, right? Force the heal. You've already seen one heal bot. It right. doesn't have Elkstraza mana. You have the Fire Elemental for lethal. Oh yeah, that's right. Fire Elemental is the lethal push. Seems pretty good to me, honestly. I wonder if uh, he's considering Lotheb to lock him out spell-wise, though. And isn't it like 19 damage, actually? Is it? 14, 17. Oh, I think it's 17 damage. 
if you hexed, if you hex and trade a Neutron and then attack right. base. Because then it'd have been eight damage from Fire Elemental, six from Pilot. That's fourteen plus the weapon. So. Where does he get the extra two damage? The Shredder. Shredder has six tam damage. Six, four, three. The two from the Power Mace, right? Three from the Power Mace. Plus the Death Rattle on it. Oh, but there's no guarantee that it goes on the Pilot Shredder. It might go on the Neutron. Well, if you trade the Neutron first, because there's Flame Tongue, so it's a two-one Frog. Oh, you're right. Oh, I forgot about the two one frog. What to do? What to do? He actually drew healing. But oh man, that Lothab. Uh, I don't know if that, that healing strike. matters. It's just that yeah. <laughs> there's too much damage on board. The shaman pressured the mage out of the game. Yeah, well played by Ping Ping Ho. Definitely locked him out there. Warlock. It's Zoo versus Handlock, and this time around, Ping Ping Ho is going for Zoo. Shrifeco is going for the Handlock, and of course. Does Strife Coat know it is? He mulligans and keeps the Iron Beak out. It's already a good sign that he has a hint that it's Zoo. And I think you just have to, right? Just because you have to be defensive. Going first against Zoo, I would never keep Owl. But it might be like Demon Lock. It's not guaranteed to be. No, this is more of a hand lock list. That's an interesting choice. I wouldn't have kept it myself. but Oh, I was always under the impression you want to keep Owl against uh, Zoo. Not when you go first, because when are you going to play it? Well, just after you... Either you answer like the turn one Undertaker, or you silence your own ancient watch if you draw it. No, I guess. Just play it out turn two. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll see if it goes with the Watcher here. Looks like that is going to be the play. I'm always a fan of like aggressively mulling for a Molten Giant, and then just gotcha. doing... Working you know, backwards from there. Yeah, just working with whatever you have at that point. That Abusive is a great draw. Wow. Because the trade is one drop for Ancient Watcher now. Which, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to do this turn, but I would. Just because it uses right. your mana, develops both your two ones. Yeah, you're going to kill it eventually anyway, because it's either getting Taunted or Shadow Flame. Alright. Oh, oh, he's going face. Dang. That's so aggressive. Just like Ladder. You like that? <laughs> well, I wouldn't do it, but <laughs> uh, definitely reminds me of the decks I lose to at rank 10 and stuff. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just power overwhelming Leroy off the top. I'm raging because who plays Leroy and Zoo? Right. It's like Leroy and Arcane Golem and two power overwhelmings. Yeah, but they still have the perfect curve one through five, even though those cards are in their deck. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hearthstone. Well. Up to Ping Ping Ho to get through this 4-5 now. I think he wishes he killed it last turn. Well, I, I guess it's the same consequence either way. 5 damage given up to the Abusive Sergeant to flame it. Yeah, but he's losing the 2-1 now. Yeah. I think you'd rather have a 2-1 and have your opponent at a... And more a problematic is the Sun and Fury Protector. That challenges whatever the Snipe Juggler that he puts out. So he gets to commit even more. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much have to trade for the, the Sun Fury. Otherwise, it kills... The Beast of Sergeant for free, or the Juggler, one of the two. Silencing the Watcher definitely doesn't work here. No. I mean, it allows you to go super aggro. How much damage? 10 damage, put him at 12. That's asking for, asking for a bad day. Not to mention you're coming up on turn 4, so Shadow Flame is a little bit concerned. Alright, a Beast of Sergeant gets in for 2. It's a, mm, this is uh, kind of what happens when you don't life tap as Warlock. You get these turn fours where you're just not doing a whole lot. One card away. Yep. Well, got an Owl the Knife Juggler, I think. I don't think that Owl was worth keeping. Well, um, it's kind of unfair to say now, considering the start that the opponent had. But Yeah, that's true. At least Owl's doing something here, because the implosion on the other end would have been devastating. Definitely. Stripecrow hmm. needs AoE, or some way to... Stripecrow needs Molten Giant is what he needs, because he's about to take a very large amount of damage. I'm definitely a big proponent of uh, just playing like they don't have Molten Giant as the zoo player, almost mm -hmm. always. The only decision here is do you defend or do you implosion? Can't fault him either way. If you do defender, do you attack so the owl? Yeah, do you attack the owl? Do you attack the face? 
The most defensive play is to kill Owl and then just not attack with Abusive Sergeant. Right. But I don't think that's the way to go. I think if you're going to not attack like yeah. that, you should just implosion and then not attack. But If you attack, if you like hold the attack and not do anything, it's just straight into Hellfire. I like this. Yeah. I would have implosion and got face, but this is fine too. Okay, Dark Bomb is an answer to this threat. Yep. But then uh, everything else is a little awkward. So is it big? You have to play the big game hunter? I think so. Then that gets destroyed by the implosion guaranteed. Yeah. No AoE. I mean, you get a Sun Fury up a uh, Twilight Drake next turn, but it's not going to be very big because you're playing two cards here. Well, also, there's a twi uh, the Twilight Drake will get silenced by the Iron Beak Owl. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure the writing's in the wall here. I feel like uh, unless Strifecore picks a Molten Giant, Molten Giant is still on the the top of the deck as a way for him to end the, or to come back into the game here. Yeah, it's always a card he can draw and just beat Zoo with. Well, it's the same stats, but not the same card. That is not going to do it. He's still one damage off from Ping Ping Ho. Uh, needs to find a way to piece together one more damage. Imagine if Implosion rolled a three or a four. Right. It's got to oh, be frustrating. Oh, not enough mana. Yeah. Dang. Still, though. So, you clear the board, right? I'm that not sure if he kills Sun Fury or not. That's the tough part. I think you do kill it, but... It's just a Shadow Flame, but I guess... I mean, Handlock only has three cards. It's the thing. When you play Handlock that way, where you don't tap and you just... Play out your reactive cards as if you're playing against Hunter. You have a really hard time winning because the only way you can actually swing the game back in your favor is Molten Giant. Molten Giant is still on the draw. But Black Knight. That's it. Oh man, I think Strife Crow's dead. Yeah, it's gonna do it. Ping Ping Ho is gonna take a 2 0 lead against Strife Crow. Yeah, Qualifier player is doing very well yeah. so far. And uh, that's going to be a very quick 2-0 lead. And once again, once again, we might have the series end very quick. I think it's the, is this the first Paladin we've seen today? Uh, today, yeah. That's oh. so disappointing. Wow, man. he's not that keeping so Keeper. Good. Look at that. Well, I guess he's going to innervate the Shade on one. So there's no reason to keep the Keeper. Striper is going to take his time with it, as always. There you go. Shade comes out, so... Turn one Shade and X-Ram is so scary to see when you're on the other side of the table. Representing just so much damage. But yeah, double knife juggler draw is definitely... <laughs> That's one way to deal with the Shade if it juggles correctly. Yeah, definitely. And Strife Crow probably will have to trade if uh, once he sees the second one. Strife Crow's hand, on the other hand, is just so terrible. Swipe, Azur, Drake, Harrison. You know, these fast Druid decks, when they innervate something out, like turn one or two, and then don't have the wild growth, you see this a lot. Or it's just kind of hero power over and over again. Casual 9 damage 2 drop from Ping Ping Ho. Strifecrow is planning on hero powering that twice in a row. Oh, this juggle is pretty important too. Oh, oh it misses. So that allows a tra the free trade. That's and great for Strifecrow. Yep. Coghammer will be able to Ooh. take care of that. And we see Ooh. Zombie Chow come down. You have to kill his Night Juggler, right? Because of Mustard for Battle. Yeah, absolutely. Too bad. We've seen Pimpy Ho get pretty unlucky in the past couple of days. It feels like there's a lot of roles that he's lost. And yet he's still here fighting, so props to him. I think he had that one zoo game. It was just one of the unluckiest games. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like everything went disastrously wrong. I think he I think he juggled like four times to the face when his opponent had like four or five minions. Yeah, and like they're like one health, right? Yeah. Uh, on the bright you know, on the bright side, he made it through anyway, and even yeah, if exactly. he didn't, he would be in a trolled in video, so <laughs> He's got that going for him. Well, it's either hero power or just a four mana two three here from Ping Ping Ho. One of the awkward things about playing Defender of Argus, of course, over something like Senjin. Yeah, the stats have distributed out so that way it could be a four or five taunt uh, if you get full value, but oftentimes it, if your opponent controls the board, it's not the case. 
But Defender always has uses, even in the late game. Yeah. Sometimes Sentin is a little bit just, you know, like what are you going to do, Sentin to a Dr. Boob later in the game? It's like, well, it doesn't really actually do much. I like seeing this attack here. Yeah. It's not completely intuitive to put damage on a minion. That's, uh, you know, when it doesn't kill it. Right, but especially a one mana minion. Mm -hmm. that. But it's good, so that way it forces out uh, two mana from his opponent and restricts his plays if he wants. I think we are going to see a Drew to the Claw with Taunt here from Strife Crow, and I think we're going to see Shao go to the face. I mean, there's some merit to trading. Off the one one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder... Quartermaster wouldn't be that powerful. I wonder how aggressive this Druid deck is. You see Chow, Harrison, Azerdrake, just kind of a mix of... Right. Maybe it's Ramp Druid. Yeah, you know, Ascension Shieldmaster is something that immediately alerts, you know. It's the zombie Chow, too. And Ascension is also just like the natural predator of piloted Shredder metagames. So, like, for s sometimes you see Ascension in, like, a normal, like, non-Ancient of War Druid deck. Maybe this is the one with Mind Control Tax and Azerdrake right. and stuff. Like, Kind of like a, just a, a wall Druid, like a Taunt Druid that just keeps... That plays pretty much the same thing, but just has a little bit more taunts than normal. Like, even has Sludge Belcher. Yeah, or even just like a fast druid that plays uh, Senjin instead of Yeti. Sure. Follow the rules. All right, Drew to the Claw is going to be following rules. Be forever cleaning up the Silver Hand recruits. I would have liked to see a Cog Hammer attack there, I think. Black Knight for Strife Crow, definitely a good card against Paladin. Is this a swipe turn? It's pretty clean. Yeah, there's two one ones, so you don't have to spend would, your turn. I would off play Senjin. Senjin also is it because it fits the curve. This is better because you hero power plus Chow into the three three, and then take out a Silver Hand, save your swipe, develop another minion. Seems a lot better. Well, it looks like he's going to clean up the one ones instead. I think he wants to play around any kind of quartermaster. That's going to expose him to Consecrate, though. A little bit. There we go, Quartermaster drawn. I think we're going to see a Sylvanas here. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a very good move on Strife Crows to clean up those 1-1s. One Sylvanas always uh, super impactful against Druids with strong boards, but... Mm. Peng Peng Ho um, has a very clean kill on this 1-5, though. He might just take that instead. I like this play better as well. If you play the Sylvanas, you really want to kill the the Druid of the Claw. And if you do that, then Sylvanas isn't getting value. No reason to rush it out either way. One thing that is also probably the back of his mind is how much damage he's taking. Mm -hmm. The Druid right. can definitely deal too much damage out of nowhere. Here we go, Black Knight. Yeah, he's on the down. streets. <laughs> Performing, asking for donations. <laughs> and destroying people. Oh, oh man. Elder Fisky. <laughs> I don't know where the line is, Dan. I don't want to get fired. <laughs> Alright. So yesterday, Arena and I were just out. We, we went to go get dinner after the open finals. And we saw a street performer who was drawn a pretty big crowd. Well, we saw a crowd of people. Yeah, yeah. We heard and they some were Michael cheering. Jackson playing. Yeah, there was Michael Jackson's Beat It. You know, I, I recognized that song from Zoolander. I was like, ah, it's a cool song. Dan assumed it was a dance-off or something. Yeah, I thought it was like a street dance battle or something. There's a lot of people going, whoa, and clapping and stuff and going nuts. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, we, I was like, hey, right now, instead of going over like to our car, I was like, why don't we go check out the, the yeah. thing? And you're like, yeah, let's do it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so we walk over there and... Uh, <laughs> It's a guy in a, like a jumpsuit. He's got some music playing. He's walking around the cloud. Apparently, from what we gathered, he's a professional jumper or something like that. Yeah, yeah. He he lines people up in like a a, sta a tall like height order yeah. and jumps over people in like a really long stance. And yeah. then uh, he was like, "Okay, before the big finale, you know, this is gonna be you're gonna see a black man fly." This is exact his words. Yep. And we're like, "Okay, cool. It's not really a, you know about the race or anything. It's just that he was just saying, I want yeah. I'm gonna fly.'" So he lines up like like six people or something. Yeah. I'm like, how is he gonna jump this, you know? But uh, before the actual finale jump, as it looks like a uh, they're gonna play, the is gonna control the board here. 
But uh, before he does, he's like, all right, well, everyone usually runs, so I want to let you know that I'm, you know, I'm a yeah. hard-working man. I'm going to be going to San Diego. I need your guys to help pay for gas so I can drive down there. So he walks around for five and a half minutes. Like, we're standing there awkwardly waiting for this guy to go around collecting donations, which is not too much different from Twitch streaming, let's be real. No, no, I've been there. <laughs> Got to hustle. Yeah. So he took my dollar. That's fine. Yeah. And uh, we're really excited to see the sick <laughs> jump. So he pulls four of the buffest guys from the crowd, has them pick him up and yeah. carry him over the line of people instead of jumping them while music's playing and he's wearing <laughs> a Batman cape because Batman can fly, apparently. Yeah, he does this whole thing. like He he puts some really badass old music up. He's getting the crowd hype and clapping with him. He's doing some nice dance moves with the guys. And he cuddles them over and whispers. And five seconds later, they sprawl him out like an eagle and carry him over the six people and then he puts his feet down, says thank you, and good night, and he runs away with all the money. I said, that man. That's the... That uh, man just sharked us. Yeah. That was my... I'm email. never going to get that dollar back. <laughs> I can just I was like, he didn't even read my donation. <laughs> you can just imagine the amount of residency <laughs> for a chat right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's like an exciting moment that Shrife Grow just managed to secure the Harrison Jones it on the It is Ramp Ash Druid. It's Ramp Druid with yeah. Combo and Harrison and Ancient of War and stuff. Just value Druid. Yeah, he calculates his mana, takes out the Tyrion, and of course Harrison doing what he does best, killing off Ashbringer. Instead of True Silver, we're going to see a Dr. Boom come down here. I'm surprised he managed to fit Force of Nature combo in this Druid deck. It's kind of like yeah. Ramp Druid with Azur Dregs and just like... It shade. has to be just one combo, right? Yeah, definitely. So, do we see the BGH here? I think so. BGH, Ancient of War. Yeah. How's the sequencing, though? Are you going to try to activate the Boom Boss before the Ancient of War? What about Savage Roar and Trade? Savage Roar. That leaves you... Yeah, you can still play Ancient of War. How much damage is it with Druid to the Claw? That's nine uh, plus six. Lethal, is 15. it? 16 damage. He has 16 damage right now. Well, it's 7 plus... Uh, three, oh, yeah, it's, it's one short. My bad. Oh, it's crazy. He's so close. Yeah. Guess we're going to see him go and face. Yeah. Well, why, why play, like, super safe when you can just be a little bit more aggressive here? I like it. Yeah, Paladin usually only plays one or two taunts. He's already gone through the Tyrion. He's getting in for five. Quality here is pretty nice, though. Because the boom bots that for me. Yeah, definitely strong. But, I mean, if they leave up one minion, like if they don't hit, he's going to use the true silver to clear. Oh, oh it misses. Oh, jeez. That's oh! so unlucky. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, man. Ping Ping Ho is definitely one of the unluckiest players in the tournament. <laughs> Look at him, he's so, he's so sad. He looks like a guy who just got his $3 taken away from him by a street performer in Burbank. Dan's just laughing at him. <laughs> I sympathize, man. Ping Ping Ho is my oh. Taiwanese like spirit Hearthstone player or whatever. He's like the equivalent of me gotcha. in Taiwan right now. He's the Taiwanese Raynet. Getting farmed by Boombots. I'm so sad for him. That's so frustrating because you like do the math and all that. You complain to stream. They don't understand. Stream never understands. It's like one in eight or something, or less than that. <laughs> Poor guy. It's funny too because the boombots had one job. Yeah. Well, to be fair, he also did a reasonable amount of damage. I think I think it got like three and th three damage or something. It was pretty good. Yeah. Jeez. Oh. I'd like to see an innervate seven drop here. I think he's. Is the plan to innervate hero power? Maybe. Yeah, it could be. In which case, why not just shade? I think. Then you consecrate. Still... You'd be vulnerable to consecration. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. But then you still have the druid of the claw in wow. hand to go through savage roar. There actually are three different ways to play from this point on. Only a tough turn to figure out. He is gonna go for wild growth cycle. I don't know if I like that. Better go quick. Oh. oh, he's combo. So that's another reason to put out the Shade of Next Ramus then. 
So Shrifeco able to piece together and navigate. And that'll put Peiping Ho potentially on his last turn here, because all Shrifeco has to do is just combo next turn and not die. Because it doesn't matter if the Shade of Next Ramus survives. There's 12 damage in just the Tree Ants if you kill off the 1-2. Yep. Oh, wait, he has Lothas. Oh my gosh. He is going to go with it. All right, True Silver, I think he's going to take out the Azerdraker. Maybe he even goes face. Hold on. If he goes face... Oh, he's going for Tragic Drake. That was an interesting thought, though. What if he did go for it? I guess he's afraid of a 9-mana swipe killing everything. Yeah. All right, Lothub is down. Is the quality lethal? Not if he heals himself with Ancient of Lore. I mean, Shrifeco realizes he easily could die at this point. If he plays Ancient of War and doesn't hero power, but he would hero power, so... Right. Because he plays Zombie Chow and hero power. There's a Quartermaster, though. Oh, man. Strifecore has to... He has to s heal? Do some math here. I think he does have to heal. Okay, he's at 10. He's at 10, so he'd be at 11 at the end of the turn. Assuming he doesn't even just attack this 1-2, but he doesn't need to. Um, yeah, since he's going to kill the 1-2, it means that right. quality alone won't kill him. And he is hovering over the heal. That is a... Superstar sense right there from Strife Crew. I like it. Alright, good play. Still, of course, threatening a ton of damage, but that zombie chow might help get Ping Ping Ho out of range of the force combo. Maybe. I mean, there's still three targets to get the, the actual plus two buff. So yeah. even if zombie chow heals, the mess most he can go to is 17. So if one of these minions survive, he still dies. Or if he doesn't take care of everything here. I mean, is there a way to live here? Uh, I'm not seeing it. There's no way to kill your own pilot shredder for, like, an Anoyotron or something, right? No, it looks like Peeping Ho's dead and Strifeco has one game three. Yeah, that one copy of Combo and Ramp Druid definitely <laughs> paying off in spades here. Alright, Strifeco's back in it. Was down 2-0. But uh, he's going to win the third game here. Yeah. I was thinking if he, was, he could have concealed, but I think there's uh, no point in hiding that. Because if you show a Savage Roar at any point, he knows he has Force of Nature. Alright, All right. game three is in the books, and Shrifeco is not going to go down without a fight. We go to the blind pick stage and see what builds, and it doesn't have a good clear. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see. Yeah. This deck is also difficult for many reasons, but Peeping Ho, I mean, he's going to need a better start than that. It's a pretty good hand from Strife Girl. Ping Ping Ho doesn't get a clean curve here. This could be a stomp. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, is that, a, is that a clean curve? Well, I mean, it's going to get Innervate swiped, but it's fine. Definitely not bad. Zombie Chow about to die for free. Anytime you play Zombie Chow against an Undertaker, this is exactly what you pray your opponent does not have. The double... <laughs> Double one drop death rattle. Yeah. It's too bad. Innervate swipe, huh? Well known. Alright. Oh, that's right. They're both gnomes. I was reading a thread. It's like, who won? The goblins or the gnomes? <laughs> After the month of the expansion, now it's like, I guess the gnomes won. I haven't seen too many. Uh, what's the best goblin? Goblin Blast Mage, dude. Oh, it's that, probably true. That goblin is insane. I mean, Matter Bomber for the the people. He's a people's champion. <laughs> but uh, some people. <laughs> he's not my champion, Frodo. He's not your champion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, well, this game looks great for Strife Girl. That was just such a clean kill. That yep. keeper was the best card he could have drawn. Ooh. This turn. So now he's got a really nice curve for two turns. Yep. Yep. And now the egg would just be a really bad version of target dummy. There is no bad version of target <laughs> dummy. <laughs> You're such full of it. You're so full of it, dude. It's such a good card. <laughs> you haven't played it, man. You're right, I haven't played it. All the combo. I'm going to try it. A new article was posted, by the way. <laughs> was it? On our site, Tempo Storm site. About the Tempo, or about the Mech Rogue, and it has target dummy. I forgot the URL on that one. What was that? It was tempostorm.com. That's what it was. Anyway. <laughs> Keeper of the Crow comes down. <laughs> uh, 
Alright, Sedgen's gonna Double go Sedgen's actually pretty good, because I mean, as much as he would like to draw into some of the, like, the 5 drops, at least he has something to do next turn. Yeah, exactly, just having a turn 5 play. I mean, once you've slowed the game down this much, it's all about just doing something until you get Ancient War down, and at that point it's so tough to lose. Strifegar's about to make a comeback after being down 2-0. This game looks very good for him. Is there, um, is there, like, uh, importance of killing the 1-1 one -one versus the 0-2? If I would kill the 0 2, but it's a free pickup. Yeah, I can't think of. It's probably very small benefits either way, right? Like playing around Mortal Coil or stuff like that. Gotcha. Maybe he defenders the, the 0 2. Okay, there is a way to crash the gates here, but I mean, that's. It's not going to help too much in the long run because there is more where that came from. There's more taunts. Yeah, the zoo's doing what it can. Harvest Golem, solid pickup, gives him a turn three play. These games always feel so one-sided as the Druid or the, the Zoo. It's very rare that it's close. It feels yeah. like either Zoo blows it out like it usually does, or Druid's able to just somehow run away with the game. Mm -hmm. Strifecar actually has a decision here. There's some merit to Wild Growth hero powering. You kill half the board, you play Ancient of War a turn earlier. Yeah, yeah you uh, drop... Mm. Ha the board's power from 4 to 2, it's pretty significant. That's probably what I would do, because it's better against Doomguard, which is the worst case scenario. And you gotta expect Zoo to have that next turn. I mean, its hand is empty, what else would it draw? If he does Doomguard, you have Force of Nature the following turn, though. When, Dan? Not if. No. <laughs> oh. Must be bugged. Alright, well. Direwolf comes down. Looks like he's gonna fight through Senjin. I think you're going to see the armor plating on the Harvest Golem here, right? You want to keep yeah. the... Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. Front half of that building. Lot. You do give up your Haunted Creeper. Oh. <laughs> Guess not. He's going to have to do this instead. This is fine, too. Yeah. Alright. Force of Nature defensively used. Good old six mana. Starfall. Hahaha. <laughs> Well, if Starfall was even five, or if Force of Nature was five mana, it was the same thing as Starfall. It wouldn't have mattered because he floated one mana. That's true. You're always the pessimist, man. <laughs> Life is beautiful if you if you want it to be. You're no longer in Minnesota, man. You're in California. Yeah, that's true. Whole new state of things to complain about. Yeah, he's also wearing a fresh new lavender button up. You guys should compliment him on that. <laughs> It's pretty snazzy. <laughs> well, uh... He does play Owl. Yeah. Nope. Mm. Not even enough power to push through it, but with the armor plating, it allows him to keep his Dark Iron Dwarf a little bit longer alive. I think what you do here is just not attack. I think you, you set up some stuff on the board and just wait a turn. Mm -hmm. Give yourself another chance to draw Owl. Buff the one... The one health minions, so that you're not as vulnerable to swipe. Play Lepernome. Oh, he's gonna go for the. No, I, I, I think I, this play is okay too. Yeah, this is definitely not bad. I'm afraid of like the possibility that your opponent has like a faceless manipulator or something. I don't know. Just like you don't want this Ancient of War to, to be at five ten. Yeah, this is definitely less ambitious. Oh, it? oh boy, that's crazy. Uh, He's got so many taunts. Like, he can afford to trade this health. Such a luxury at this point. Yeah, Stripe Crow's just extremely far ahead. I mean, one, once you deal with Zoo's initial push like that, and you're playing a deck with such powerful taunts to just lock up the game, it becomes so tough to lose. No, oh, not a bad draw at all. Actually, that's a sick draw. And if he drew Doomguard... Oh... Oh man, it was—it would have been close. I mean, there's another Ancient of War waiting on the other end, but Direwolf Alpha was a really powerful draw. Definitely, it still is. Get a poor man's flame tongue totem, doing work. Ah, it's the the hunter man's flame tongue totem. <laughs> it's the beast. I'm surprised he didn't. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter too much. Right, but. Outcome's about the same. Oh, 
Oh, man. Good draw from Strifeco as well. The Wrath allows him to kill off the Knife Juggler as well. And then slam down the Ancient of War. I think that is the player we're going to see. He's considering saving the Wrath. Letting the Juggler live. Drawing card later, but yeah, I'll just take the clean kill here. Alright, and it's a 5-10 taunt against the Dire Wolf. Strife got a very healthy life total and up two cards on the zoo player. Classic David vs. Goliath story. Oh! He does have an Iron Beak Owl. Snap call from Pimping Ho. I mean, how many more taunts are in this deck? Uh, well, Sludge Belchers, I, I would imagine. Yeah. Although he is playing Azur Drake. I'm not sure if he does play Belcher because we haven't. I don't think we've seen one yet. Oh my god. Swipe. Is that good? Just wrecked him. Can't tell if that's good. Well, that's it. Pink Strife Pink Crow ties it up. <laughs> two to two after being down two games to nothing. Pink Pink Ho has to somehow get a win back, but Strife Crow is the one with momentum. Well, uh, I mean, like you said, it's one of the three times it would be a pa patient assassin. It can't be a doomsayer. I'm always scared of that. That's not a really good start either for Ping Ping Ho. Zombie Chow single-handedly dissects almost all of what Shaman does early game without having a one-mana removal spell. Yeah, definitely a great card to see for Strife Crow. And okay. we haven't seen Lightning Bolts from Ping Ping Ho, so if he doesn't get a Rock Biter, he's not going to have a great answer to that. Maybe he'll be coining Haunted Creeper and then follow that up with a Flame Tongue to take out the, the Chow. But He's not on the coin, though. He's going first. Oh, you're so. right, right. Yeah, Strife Crow is the... I see two cards, and I'm just like... Gotcha, gotcha. Get a little thrown off. Two swipes and a BGH. That is not very good for Strife Crow. Right. He tossed away a Keeper of the Grove. That's surprising. I would have kept the Senjin and tossed the Keeper. Yeah, I guess he wanted to push for Wild Growth really hard. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Well, that is going to be a pretty solid power mace. Taking out Chow. Ping Ping Ho, by playing Haunted Creeper here, is giving Strife Crow the opportunity to hero power one of those spiders on turn two. He could have just hero powered instead, but I like this play that he made because there's a good chance Strife Crow had the wild growth and wouldn't have been able to hero power anyway. Here's the question, do we see Power Maze? We do. Turn three Power Maze, turn four Shredder is just so powerful. It creates a 6-5. I mean, who needs Sky Golem when you have the Pilot Shredder buffed a little bit like that? Yeah. It's a great curve. Are we going to see BGH just dropped? I think it's going to probably be a Hero Power. Or maybe a Cycled Wrath, even. Wrath has a lot of value against Shaman. It can take out important protected minions like Mana Tide, Flame Tongue. It's so actually a tough decision for Strife Crow. He's got, I think, like, one, two, three... Three, three solid options here. You can draw a card with Wrath, you can hero power the 1-1, one, one, or you can play Big Game Hunter. Well, if he... Hold, okay, if he does play BGH, that Power Mace is going to have a good target. Right. And he's going to get wrecked, so the key recognizes that. And he is going to hold on to Wrath, use that as removal later, rather than drawing the card looking for a better play. He's not under too much pressure, though. No reason to rush it. Yep. Uh, Shredder comes down. And he is just going to attack face. Dang. He cares more about the buff. Uh, that's Which, really weak to keep with the Grove. That card that Striper <laughs> just drew off the top. <laughs> oh, poor Ping Ping Ho. To be fair, if he didn't make that attack, uh, it would have been weak to Wrath. Right. Which Striper did have. Man. Striper not only just took out the buff, but also killed Patient Assassin. Do you like uh, Defender of Argus Chow here, or just Belcher? Belcher's... I, I like think Belcher contests a lot better. Oh. Hero power, Mana Tide. Okay, I like this too. Because that could have been healing, it could have been taunt, and he got one of them. Right. This swipe, though, doesn't get much better than that against Shaman. The only question is, do you coin the hero power? Well, then you'd be missing out on your next turn to go into double seven drop. Yep. That feels a little bit too good to pass up. I don't know how much the zero one threatens you though. Dang. Is it that important to take it out? No, well, you gotta be concerned about healing totem coming down and making it an O two again. Mm. It's also gonna 
give him flame tongue totem value, so your seven drop's gonna be that much less effective. Because Ping Ping Ho is gonna have access to two more power. He's just gonna continue getting totem value, not really concerned about slamming his five drops here. He has flame tongue in hand. Putting the death rattles on the left. Good shaman mechanics. I like it. Okay, well it's still starting to get um, to the point where Strife Cruiser be dropping bombs here. <laughs> Mom <Bomb> spaghetti. <laughs> he could uh, wrath the harvest golem and swipe the chow, but he's gonna opt to charge Drew to the claw instead. I like it. Very aggressive play. Might just see a flame tongue come down here. Flame tongue into one of the five drops. But what do you use to trade? Is it the, the chow. zombie chow? Yeah, I would do the chow. Oh man! Oh, if you play if you play Lothab, you can't swipe, Kenny. No. Ah, for the Belcher instead. Oh, but if he did play Lothab, he'd be able to hero power the damage golem and then big game hunter. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I think that's better if you avoided that. Definitely. Yeah. So this is a problematic thing considering that the flame tone turn, but you can wrath it. But it does disrupt your natural clean turn of seven of playing an ancient of lore or uh, an ancient of war. But you do have ascension, so hmm. How much power is remaining? You have seven power. Yeah, maybe the play is Senjin Wrath. If you swipe this turn, it's just so awkward. It's not really, you can't really do anything else beyond that. No, Big Game Hunter is pretty useless. Probably have to end up wrathing the, well, one of the minions. In addition to swipe, if you go that route. Hmm. And not to mention, you give Amber a second swipe, too. And you have Azure Tricks in this deck. So yeah. I think actually because you have Azure Tricks, you really need to hold on to the swipe. Yeah. I like this play from Strife Crow. I think it's his best option. Ooh. Epsilon! That's a card worth big game huntering. Oh yeah, one of the most satisfying ones too. That Overload punishes so much. Still wait on it for a while. Shaman still pretty resilient. Ping Ping Ho though is just gonna develop a massive board. There's still a Black Knight in this deck and he knows it too. Well he already has a target in play for it. Doesn't mind giving two more. Sure. He needs to draw for more options. Five, ten, thirteen damage. I mean, if I'm Pimping Ho, I feel a Lothos coming down here and you push, right? Definitely. You're pretty close to killing your opponent. Yeah, he sees that Lothos going to lock Strife Crow out of any ways to catch up. I wonder. Hmm. Well, okay, so if he puts out, he's got 13 damage with uh, 6 joining the board, so he's got 19 I'm surprised Strifecrow played Lore there, rather than Ancient of War. Yeah, I, w I also thought that Ancient of War was coming out as well. I think he's afraid of Earthshock or, like, Hex. I guess the Ancient of War would be a Hex target. Alright, Ping Ping Ho gets in for a lot. So, if he... Ancient of Wars... Uh, kills off the opponent's zombie chow. He'd be at 12. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Is the swipe do anything here? I mean... Oh, that's, that's a good question, too. I don't know. It's pretty complicated. If you swipe, the most you can reduce the board damage off is, uh... 5? Guaranteed? There's always the piloted Shredder out. Kill Shredder. Oh, man. Get Dooms there. <laughs> 1.5%. That's, that's just too unreliable considering you can gain 5 health from Zombie Chow. Well, you can kill both, right? You can swipe the, the Shredder. Right. The Ancient of War... 
is another 10 health. You can give you can gain 15 effective health here. So if he he has five, six, uh, eight, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and you'd be at twelve health. You'd be at twelve health with an ancient of lore. Yeah, I think that's probably his best bet here. All right, Strive Crow's banking on Pikmin Ho not having an Earthshock or a Hex in his last two cards. Will uh, he draw one? Neptulon and... Nope. Harvest Golem. Alright, I'm excited. This means we get to play with Murlocs. What if he trades the Shredder after doing this? Oh, man. <laughs> it becomes it a comes. Doomsayer? There it comes. <laughs> they never check first, Dan. Uh, I guess he could have been Mana Wraith. No, he can use the uh, Bluegill and avoid it. He can avoid trading and using a Bluegill Warrior. I actually kind of like that. So you um, push for eight damage by using the blue. There it is, no respect. Oh, and no justice. What? <laughs> no, that is justice. Peeping Hill has been getting so unlucky. He has been. He has been. I know. Right, and then Nat Bagel is like a way to reward himself for all of the toil that he's endured. Howdy. No, uh, yeah, man. One time, somebody's gonna get Doomsayer wrecked by playing the the seven drop first. That's okay. Will you be casting it though? Relishing in the RNG. I don't know. Either way, I'm pretty sure Strife Crow is going to need an Azure Drake. Oh, wait, he can't even fully swipe everything down. And BGH can deal with this Neptulon. Wait, wait. BGH sw uh, swipe, swipe is really good. It's crazy. Oh my god. Yeah. That is nuts. It's very good. You can even, you can probably play uh, shade. shade. You don't have to hero power or anything. Well, you could hero power. So there's three damage on the field. You're at eight health. Can you do five? Well, if he has a, a Murloc plus the what's the worst case scenario? Murloc plus the Earl Murkai, right? So that would be three attack, unless it's the War Leader, which case that would be five attack. So he would die if it was old Murkai plus the War Leader. Yeah. But he's already seen one Murloc, he knows his only. Or seen two Murlocs. Yeah. No, I, he has to kill off. Play the shit. Otherwise, he might die to that stupid Murloc combo. You can that see Bagel! Think Ping Ho is not happy about this. Howdy! Hex right on time. Not happy? That Bagel just got him Lightning Storm! Oh, he's, happy about, he's happy about the Pagel. Not happy about the BGH swipe turn. Are you kidding me? That's so funny. Oh, this brings me back to dark times and tournaments. And that Paggle in every deck. Alright. stuff. It's good stuff, Raynad. I like that it's down now. This is, this is fun when it's off Pilot and Shredder, for sure. <laughs> Alright, well, let's see. What does Shrifeco have? He's got 12 mana available to him. That gives him the Black Knight plus the Senjin play. If he's willing to throw away this Innervate, he can cycle Wild Growth first, but I think we are just going to see the Senjin saving the Innervate. I like this a lot better. Strive Crow agrees. He's still got... Wow! That, that's wow. a good Pagel! Yeah, two mana. Oh, it's a free Mana Tide Totem. Wait, how much damage? Oracle and Oracle could be lethal. Just draws another Rock Biter. Oh, All right, he's done it! And Pipi Ho is going to the semifinals. Off of Nat Pagel. Bringing Strife Crow's good run to uh, to a halt. Well played by Ping Ping Ho. Wow. Well yeah, well played by him. Consistently performing well in a ESL Legendary Series. Keeps getting far. He's really happy for this win. Well, he good beat one him. of the best players yeah. you know, in all of North America, too. To Definitely, in the world, yeah. And, you know, doing it with his most comfortable deck, his favorite class.